Preventing the transmission of infective organisms is an important aspect of health care and a major concern for all nurses. In this series, we will look at ways in which this transmission takes place and actions the nurse must perform to prevent this from occurring. The chain of infection provides a visual model for understanding the process of disease transmission. It is represented by a circle of links, with each link representing a component in the chain. Each link must be present and in sequential order for an infection to occur. This means that the removal of any link will prevent the transmission of the infection. The links are an infectious agent, reservoir containing this agent, a portal of exit from the reservoir, a mode of transmission, a portal of entry, and a susceptible host. The first link in the chain is the infectious agent itself, also known as the causative organism. This can be a bacteria, virus, fungus, or yeast. The second link is called the reservoir and is the place where this agent initially resides. The reservoir may be an individual who is ill with a communicable disease or harboring a localized infection, such as an abscess or septic wound, or an individual who is not ill, but who carries the infectious organism or contaminated fluid object or surface. Portal of exit refers to the route by which this organism can leave the reservoir and includes open wounds and body orifices. It can also refer to a defect in a transport container, such as a leak in a specimen jar. The mode of transmission is the route by which the organism travels. This can happen in many ways and is both the most common factor in the unintended spread of infection and the most easily eliminated. Dirty or contaminated hands are the common culprit, but infectious matter can also be transmitted by soiled garments, dressings, linens, hard surfaces, droplets or air currents, depending on the organism. Portal of entry, or the route by which the organism enters the new host, is another major factor in infection prevention. Hospitalized patients commonly have procedures, including IVs, central lines, surgical incisions, and urinary catheters, all of which bypass the body's normal primary line of defense, the skin, and create routes through which infectious organisms can enter. They may also have assaults to skin integrity, such as cuts, abrasions, burns, or open sores. The risk is heightened by the final link in the chain, that of being a susceptible host. Factors that cause increased susceptibility include a recent or current illness, nutritional deficits, or medical treatments which can impair the immune system, such as chemotherapy, surgery, or traumatic injury. Bedside asepsis is practiced for the mutual protection of patients, caregivers, and visitors, both by reducing the number of organisms present in the environment and by preventing cross-contamination. The goal is to break the chain of infection by applying proper aseptic technique. The process begins with a careful risk assessment. In other words, what is the risk that a patient is or will become a link in the chain of infection. A patient may be infected with an agent that could be transmitted to others, a reservoir, or a patient could be at risk of contracting an infection, a host.